Last time, we defined the board type and wrote a toForm function, which we used to draw it to the screen. In this video, we'll continue working on our board and add in functionality for clearing out complete rows. We'll start by writing a function called cumulative sum, which takes in a list of integers and produces a list which is the cumulative sum of each value in the list we passed in. This can be easily accomplished by using the function scanL, which repeatedly applies a function to a list and stores the intermediate results. Let's test it out really quick by commenting out our main function and writing show cumulative sum 1, 2, 3. Before we can run this, we need to import show from the graphics.element package. And it looks like it's working. Next, let's write a function called iota, which will take in an integer and produce a list of integers between 0 and the specified value. We'll start by using the repeat function to create a list of ones of size n minus 1. And then we'll produce the cumulative sum. Let's test this out real quick. Iota of 10 should return a list from 0 to 9. And it does. Great. You're probably wondering what the heck these two functions have to do with our Tetris game, but trust me. It will become useful very soon. Our end goal for this video is to write a function which will clear out all of the completed rows in our board. To do this, we're going to need to construct a board with some completed rows. So, let's write a function called fill row. It will take in an integer specifying which row we want to fill, a block which will be used to fill that row, and a board which we want to fill. Finally, it will produce a board with that row filled. We are going to need to create a list of location to block pairs containing all of the positions we want to fill. We'll start by creating a list of all of the column positions we would like to fill. This happens to be the values between 0 and our column width. And we just wrote iota, so we'll pass in calls here. We then want a list containing the row locations we're going to fill. This one is particularly easy because all of the locations have the same row. We will simply repeat it calls number of times. Now, to get a list of all of our locations, we need to zip these together. We can do this using the map to function. Just like map, this takes in a function. However, this function is applied to two lists rather than one. We'll apply the pair constructor to our rows and columns. Next, we need to associate each location with the block we want to fill it with. Again, we can use repeat to generate a list of our block. And again, using map2, we'll create a pairing between our locations and blocks. Let's now use the new function to construct a board containing our location block pairs. Finally, we can simply use dictionary's union function to add them to our board. The order of these arguments here is important. We want the new blocks we are adding to replace anything in the board that was passed in. So, we'll simply put it as the first argument. Now, let's see what this looks like. We'll start with a new board, which contains no blocks. Then we will fill row 0 with red blocks. And let's add this to our main function. Great! Let's add a few more rows. We'll add a yellow row.
and a blue row. And this looks good to me. Next, we'll write a function called check row, which will check to see if a specified row is complete. It will take in an integer specifying the row, the board we want to check, and it will produce true if the row is complete and false otherwise. We'll start by getting all of the blocks in the specified row. To do this, we will use dictionary's filter function, which takes in a predicate function and applies it to every value in the dictionary. If the predicate returns true, the resulting dictionary contains that value. Otherwise, it is discarded. We will write an anonymous function using a lambda expression. Filter is expecting a function which takes in a key and a value, and we only really care about the row, so I'm going to use these underscores for values we're not interested in. This is typically called a don't care. Then, the predicate will check if the row in the entry we are looking at is equal to the row which we're interested in. And of course, we are filtering over the board that was given to us. Now that we have a dictionary containing only the locations with the row we're interested in, we can simply check to see if there are blocks equal to the number of columns we have. Next, we're going to write a function called clear row. This function removes a row from a board and shifts all of the blocks above that row down. It will take in an integer for the row we want to clear, the board we want to work with, and produce a board with that row removed. If your intuition is telling you we're going to be using fold to accomplish this task, then go ahead and give yourself a pat on the back because you're right. First, we will write a helper function called shift, which we'll use to examine each location block pair in our list and determine how it should be added to our new board. If the location's row is less than the row we are clearing, then we will insert that block into our new board at the exact location it was in the original board. This is because it was below the row we were removing, so it's unaffected. If the location's row is above the row we are clearing, then we will insert it into our new board with its row shifted down by one. Finally, if the location is in the row we are removing, we simply won't copy it over to our new board. Okay, let's go ahead and finish this function off. We will be using dictionary's fold r function. It will take in shift as the function we want to apply everywhere. We'll seed it with an empty board since we're copying things over. And of course, we're going to apply it to the board that was given to us. Excellent. Let's go ahead and test this. Let's clear row zero. Looks good. And now let's clear row one. Great! Now, let's take a crack at writing the clear lines function. This function is going to take in a board and return a pair containing the number of rows which we cleared and a new board with those rows cleared out. Writing this function directly seems difficult. Instead, I'm going to harness the power of recursion to accomplish it. I'll start by creating a helper function called clear lines prime. This will be a simpler function that checks a single row and clears it if necessary. It will take in a row to check, the number of lines which have been cleared so far, and the board that I want to check. If the row it is checking is greater than or equal to the number of rows in our board, then we're done because we've already checked everything up to that point. We'll simply return the number of lines that we've cleared so far and the resulting board. Else, if we check the row and it should be cleared, Then, we will clear that row from the board, we will add one to the number of lines completed, 
and we will call clear lines prime again on the same row. We are calling it on the same row because clear row just shifted all of the rows above this one down, so it's possible that the row that we just cleared is filled again. Finally, if we don't need to clear this row, it will simply call clear lines prime on the row above this one. Since the board is unchanged, we'll simply pass lines and board through. Now, we simply call our helper function and set it to start at row zero, and we specify that initially no lines have been cleared. Really, not bad at all. Okay, let's test this out. We'll call clear lines on our test board, which will result in the int pair. So let's go ahead and also use SND, which pulls out the second value of a pair. And as you can see, all the lines have been cleared. Let's go ahead and make it a little bit more interesting. We'll use dictionary's remove function to remove one of the elements from the first row. Nice, looks like things are working correctly. We have a few more helper functions to write and we'll continue working on them in the next video.